to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Berry. The Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. So happy you've taken a little time out of your day to join us on the Saturday morning live from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, no matter where you're listening to us. Uh, in the country or around the world, we have listeners all over and uh, during live and post production uh, on, on podcast and in studio video. Going to go through a number of ways or a number of ways we put our garden to bed. But what we're wanting to do is, uh, you want to put the garden to bed so it's ready to go in the spring, or so there's minimal activity you have to do in the spring. Because if you're a gardener, you know there's a certain week in March, April, early May where everything has to get done. It feels like in, in two days. So we want to put the garden to bed. We want to feed the soil is one of the big things here in the fall. You can do that in a variety of different ways. You can uh, feed the soil by layering compost on top of it, which is what we do. You can also layer leaves on top of it. We talked about the beneficial uh, properties and the importance of leaves in the garden a couple of weeks ago, and we put two to three feet of leaves on each one of our grow beds. Before we do all that, yes. You had wanted to, we were talking about how the leaves have not dropped yet. Right. Because of the, the kind it's of the drought. Drought, yeah, they're yeah. holding on for a little bit right. longer. So you may have to do this come, maybe you've put your garden to bed, but now you want to put leaves on it, and you're like, I have no leaves. So you may have to wait a little bit before right. uh, these leaves drop. Before we do any of this, which I would recommend you doing, is going out to the garden, big or small, however large your garden, photograph it. Take your phone, take a picture of it. Or pictures, so you know what was planted where this year. That is important, so you're not putting tomatoes in the same spot tomatoes were this year, next year. Because the rotation of crops is important, because certain crops give and certain crops take away from the nutrients in the soil. So you don't want to double crop or put a same crop in the same spot year after year after year. You will greatly decrease the productivity of those plants. So that's a note for you to know what was where because even with us we have to think and go back and look at video and and pictures of what was in this spot last year and sometimes what was in the spot two years ago so i don't put potatoes in the same spot you know uh, Mm -hmm. uh, skip a year so we want to photograph it then we want to remove any of the uh diseased plants definitely if you have something with blight like a late tomato blight um any type any type of blight um if you have bean rust on your plants, you don't want to put those in your compost. You want to put them directly in the trash. You don't want to don't put them, them in the street. Don't, don't put don't them in do the street. That. Don't, do that. don't burn don't, them. Don't burn them. No. You want to just put them directly in the trash, because what can happen is that if that if that blight continues to live on, then if you put it if into it the street, if it stays warm enough in that compost, yeah, if it stays warm enough, if you put them in the street, then you're going to spread that around to all of your. Uh, your friends well, anybody and family who's, and anybody who's going to pick up that compost from the city. Right, because that city's mm-hmm. compost is going to have that blight in it, which stays warm enough because compost breaks down at a certain temperature. The blight stays active. And then and if you put it in your own you, compost, right. you have that same issue. So if you have a plant that has a disease, and you're not sure what that disease is, it's better to just put it in the trash versus trying to think, okay, maybe this compost will kill that disease and that's not necessarily what's going to happen i would even recommend powdery mildew on your vine crop your zucchini your melons your uh, pumpkins some people will say you can put that in the compost and the heat will kill it that may be scientifically proven uh but i would much rather just get it away get it gone make it disappear not put it in the street do not put it in the compost and start fresh right uh as simply as that if, there, if you have plants that are not diseased, that are perfectly fine, that just died from natural progression, natural cycle, compost those, that's fine. Right. And so then another thing you want to do is if you're going to do the, um, you can prune the perennials, especially, but the woody ones, you want to wait until they've lost all of their leaves. Uh, the same thing with trees. It's mm-hmm. too early to be trimming trees. You want to wait until a dormancy. They go into dormancy, and that's why it's more recommended to trim trees l- you know, late January, early February, before they come out of dormancy uh, so you are you can do it correctly. Right. So this is something to keep in mind. We're telling you this now, yes, but it doesn't mean you need to do all of this this weekend necessarily. Is something that you can over the next do couple over of the weeks, next couple yeah. weeks. Uh, don't, uh, leave some plants for the birds. Uh, sunflowers we leave up for the birds uh, until they completely defi- uh, d- d- destroy them. Um, and there's other plants that you can leave up. Also, if you have a lot of shrubbery, uh, that type of thing, that's good for them to, to live. Also, insects, 
to to house over the winter as well. And you can you can actually do some planting now. You can plant your garlic. That's you still have, you can still do that. If you have any other bulbs you want to plant, you can still do that at this point. You can do it up until you know the ground freezes. Essentially. Well, I would recommend the garlic. Right. Well, the garlic you'd want to do now, but right. any other bulbs you could do over the next couple of weeks. Uh, you you want to clean, get your tools cleaned up. Uh, don't use automotive oil or lubricant to clean your tools. That if you're going to be organic about this, use a you know a cooking oil of some sort. Scrub it with a wire brush and then coat it with a cooking oil that is an, a, a food grade material because y- it doesn't make any sense to clean the tool and then spray it with a lubricant that is not organic or not right. food grade, and then you're mixing it in with your soil. But the, the important part is to clean those tools. Uh, make because sure they, they will rust. They will yeah. rust. Bring them in. Don't just leave them randomly in your yard or and, whatever. And, and the reason why is because the wood handles will begin to rot, and then you'll start digging, and your handles will start breaking, and it's uh, not a good – then you got to buy new tools. And then you have to think about your containers. At some point, either you're going to decide to leave them out for winter or you want to bring them in. But if, if the plants in them are dead, maybe you want to dump the soil somewhere. Maybe you want to bring them into a shed with the soil in them. That's something that you have to think about, too. Grow bags, if you're growing in grow bags, you can leave those out. Those are not going to be hurt. If you're using the root maker grow bags, the white co- uh, coated, perfectly fine. Leave them out all winter long. Or you can take them in and clean your grow bags uh, just in soapy water, uh, rinse them in a bucket. Don't put them through the wash machine because that doesn't work. We've learned that lesson. Uh, the coating comes off of those. Um, One thing I want to mention is say you have a pile of brush that you just toss behind like your shed or your garage or your, your back 40 or something, you may want to clean that up a bit. It can invite animals in over the winter. Hibernate. Or Hibernation, hibernate yeah. yeah, so you may want to, if, if that's something that you're trying to avoid, you want to think about that now. Uh, also, you want to shield plants uh, that animals might eat, put fences around shrubs, or use uh, guards or fencing around trees to protect uh, from rabbits, voles, and deers. Also, you can coat them down with Bobex, the uh, animal repellent spray that's a sponsor of the program. That works uh, very, very well. It also, uh, you might want to get it if you have family that stays too long at your house over the holidays. That that will get rid of them, too. Uh, but you use that as your own discretion. It, it's not something you want to open up indoors. I'll put well, it that way. You just don't take your trash out. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll cover that maybe some other time. Yeah. Uh, but so. you want to protect those uh, those plants from being ate on because the plants are in a dormancy state, and the destruction of these animals on these plants will kill the plants. Where They eat the bark away from the, the tree. The bark is the life portion of the plant. Of the of the tree, and if the, all the bark is gone, the plant the tree is going to die. So, uh, and also you can mound soil and mulch around the base of uh, grafted uh, rose plants, roses, and uh, but remove remember to remove that in the spring so they don't suffocate. That's, I think that's good to know um, because we we've talked about roses, and while we don't grow any roses, a lot of people do. And it's important to protect those. A lot of the plants in which we grow are not always necessarily. Uh, acclimated to the environment in which we grow them in. So if you have any plants outside that you want to bring in, you can certainly do that by putting them in a container, digging them up. Maybe you've got a pepper plant that you're trying to save and, and try to get a few more peppers off of, that type of thing, or flowers, and they're in container, uh, they're in the ground and you want to dig them up and bring them in. You can do that, but you want to follow some of the recommendations that William Moss gave us two weeks ago in bringing those plants indoors so you can limit the amount of bugs that you do introduce into your home, your basement, your grow room, whatever the case is on that. So uh, putting the garden to bed, uh, our biggest thing is you got to feed the soil. you got to put the soil, feed the soil. Now you can till it back in the, in the, you can till the leaves in the soil. We don't do that. We just recommend laying them on top. And if you have a really, an area that's really clay dense soil, Take compost to put six, eight inches of compost on top of that. Don't mix it in. Over the next six, eight, twelve months, that will the natural progression of nature, the microbes, the water, the worms will pull that compost into that soil and break that soil apart that was very dense, densely clay packed, mm-hmm. and it will enrich the soil like you wouldn't believe, and you wouldn't, and you don't have to do a thing. There is some time you have to give it to do its thing. But it will work very well. But feed that soil because if you don't, there's only so much fertilizer you can put in the, in the ground. And um, natural fertilizer in leaves 
and compost is the best way. If you're in the Milwaukee or surrounding areas, just tune your radio to 860 AM or FM 106.5. You can also find links on our Facebook pages, The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Home Canning. Our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, click on the radio tab at the top of the page, then click on the Listen Live button, and you'll have immediately access to our live program. Mobile devices work very well also. Go to your app store and download for free the TuneIn app or the simple radio app. Then search WNOV 860, save it to your favorites, and you can have access to our radio show live wherever you're at in the world. Our radio program will also have podcast replay under the radio tab day, uh, several days following the live broadcast. You can find all of these links in the show notes below. Our show airs 9 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every Saturday, March through the end of October. And we want to thank our sponsors because without them, this would not be anywhere possible. You can find all of their links under the radio tab on our website at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.